Okay, so our topic for today is functions. Functions, no matter what math um, level you're at, whether in school, once once they start teaching you functions, they stay with you till you graduate from from university. So, <clears throat> but still, there are so many people who still don't get the concept of a function. So, um. I'm going to start by basically first just going over what it is and and I'll go with the typical definition which most likely everybody has seen in, at some point. If you just think of the um, function as a box, a black box, okay, and um, this box has input, okay, it takes any input and of course it gives you output. Okay. Now this is a typical. Um, th this is any typical system. Any system in the world can be almost modeled using this very basic concept that there is a black box which does something to whatever input is given to it. It could just be shaking it around. Okay. It could be mashing something. It could be a blender that takes fruit and you know ice cream and you know a cake and you sort of uh, blend it all together and produces a uh, a milkshake or you put yogurt in that and produces a smoothie and so on and so on right but the fact of the matter is that everything's got to take whatever whatever systems there or whatever thing is there it takes input and it gives you output just keep that in mind so you have to focus your thinking in that way when you're listening to this video look at all the things around in your room and think about can you think of them as an input output system for instance, one way to look at it is when, when you're in front of the computer, you have the input source, one of the input sources you have, you have two input sources. You've got the, the mouse and you've got your keyboard. Uh, the two of these help you to, well, the mouse helps you navigate, all right? And it can be thought of as input because clicks are input. You input that th into the computer, clicks, and the computer responds by by you know taking to you to, to a website or opening a web page or taking some action in the same way you type in words into the through the keyboard and they may appear in the form of a word document they might they it may be just an entry on google or you're searching for something or on youtube or you're searching maybe you just searched for this video you typed in functions i'm having problems with functions so you want to know something about that so anyway as i said this is, I'm just off the top of my head, this is where I'm sitting right now, making this video, a computer is in front of me, a tablet in front of me, so anything around you can be thought of as an input-output system. Now remember that mathematics, the problem is that a lot of students when they study mathematics, they are never taught that this is a useful, applicable subject. It's not like math, it's not like biology or physics or chemistry, where it's very obvious how physics deals with the physical laws of the world, how things move around, the mechanics and so on and so forth, electricity, you got electrons and you got protons, and all of these are tangible objects. And you talk about them. Biology is the same. Biology, first, uh, the first bio object is yourself, okay? You've got blood, you've got circulatory system, you've got the heart, you've got all of that stuff and I mean the fact is that you can see this so bacteria go to a lab you know just go and uh, put a little thing under the microscope and you can see the bacteria okay so the fact is that all these subjects whether it's accounting it's finance it's economics everything has tangible results that you can see and as as learners that's the best way for us to learn we want to know where it's used therefore the typical question every student asks asks me or is on their mind when they're in my class. Why am I in this calculus class? Why am I in this math class? Why do I have to take this? It doesn't fit in my degree. I don't have anything to do with it. In fact, uh, you know, mathematics is used for modeling almost everything. And the fact is we never start there. We always start with all these X's and Y's and all these complicated equations. And all people get good at is just solving things. So anyway, sorry, that's my spiel on Math is, is an act, applicable subject, and let me put my money where my mouth is. So that's why I wanted to start with functions saying this is an input, uh, think of it as an input-output system, okay? And everything can be thought of as an input-output system because we have to develop a language. If you're going to model anything, you're going to model this computer, or you're going to model the hard drive, or you can model the textbook sitting in front of you, or you're going to model the, the speaker, or you can model anything at all, okay? Or the heater, or anything in your house or around your, in, in your life, if you're gonna model something, yourself as a person taking input 
and giving output. Input could be what you're hearing. When you're listening to this, uh, this class, you heard that bell ring just behind me. You're probably thinking, okay, that's my mobile phone and I just received an email or a, or a message or something, right? So the fact of the matter is that we take input, we process it, and we give output. So, um, the, so the very fabric of, um, of modeling any system in the world, the mo if we bring it to its basics, it is very possible to think of it as an input-output system. Now, this is very important. This is very important because if I'm going to make a claim like we can model everything using math, and you've heard people say, oh, yeah, math is really useful. I don't like it, but I know it's really useful. Yeah, what is it useful for? That's the big question, right? It isn't useful for just calculating the discount uh, when you're in a sale. That's not math, okay? That's just a bit of arithmetic. Mathematics is much bigger than that, much more powerful a tool than that. But in order to fathom that, in order to understand and grasp that, we have to build from scratch. And the first thing where we begin are functions. And functions can be thought of as input, output, boxes okay and you can build see you this this input and output that i have here this output could go back as input into another system okay and then we, we get more output and that goes into another system and that gives me more output and that gives you know and so on and so on and so on so these could be just building blocks and, and if you put these together in the right sequence, you can almost form any system you can think of, okay? So that's why this is like the most formal and, and, and basic language. As I said, let's go back. Okay, so input and it gives you output. Let's look at an example uh, just, just to cement this concept. I'm just going to use an analogy here. So just bear with me for a second. So I'm going to use this little blender here. You see, little blender. So everybody knows what a blender is. We make smoothies, milkshakes, or sauces, anything you like. I'm gonna use this as an example of an input-output system. So obviously something's gotta go into this blender and something's gonna come out of this blender. Okay, let's think about this. What goes into the blender? Okay, look at all that yummy fruit. Okay, excellent, very healthy for you. Okay, let's put it here. So. I'm going to say what the input to the blender, valid input to the blender could be fruit. Sounds easy and simple. So if we're going to make a milkshake, can't have a milkshake without ice cream. Yummy, yummy for your tummy. So let's put that here as well. That's more input that can go into the, into the blender. Okay, and we can mix it all up. And of course, it produces something yummy at the end of it. And this is what we expect it to produce. At the end of all that hard work, put all that stuff into the blender, put all that stuff into the blender, and you end up getting the milkshake. So you see, it takes this input here, all right, takes the input, and gives us this output. Okay, so here's, the, so that's basically how functions work. Okay, now functions, when you see them in math, of course, you won't see all these beautiful things going into some machine. What you end up seeing is, in fact, uh, you know, this function F, this letter F is the famous box. Okay, so F is the name of the box, like the blender. Well, it could be a blender. It could be a meat mince meat mixer if we're in the kitchen. As I said, it could be a computer with input going through the keyboard and, and so on and so forth. Okay, but it receives input. And what we mathematically, because we want to develop a mathematical language for these input-output systems, so we call this black box uh, an F. Um, okay, F. And F stands for function. Uh, and here, before your mind goes anywhere else, and we have input x. So x goes in and gives us what is called f of x, which means f works on x and does something to it and gives us a result. All right, so that's the basic concept of a function and why uh, we have this input-output idea. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. And basically, that's I just wanted to give you an idea of what's a function all about. And we'll continue with other videos where we get more into formally uh, domain and range and so on and so forth. Thank you for listening.